Hello. Um, today's tutorial is the very, very first lesson that you will learn uh, when you get handed a practice chanter for the very first time. So, um, the first thing that we do is hand the person a practice chanter. And at this point, I would ask the, the, the learner to hold the chanter in the right hand. Okay, always the right hand I would recommend, no matter whether you're right or left handed, so always the right hand. I would ask the learner at this point to look at their left thumb and then turn it 90 degrees to the right and place it on the back hole of the chanter. Okay, you'll now look down the front of the chanter and notice that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes that we want to cover at some point in the future. Our left pointing finger is going to cover the first hole. The second middle finger is going to cover the next hole. And then the ring finger is going to cover the third hole down. So one, two, three. Now, it's extremely important that these fingers are straight, relaxed and straight. We don't want um, too much pressure on your fingers, relaxed and straight. If for any reason that they're curled over, we're not going to entirely cover the holes and we'll not get the correct sound. We don't want it like this. So if your fingers look a little bent like this, we simply have to slide the fingers across the chanter until they are straight. If I was to put a wee bit of pressure on to the holes, they would leave a mark roughly in line and, and just uh, on the lines where the, the different pads of the finger meet. Okay, so nice, relaxed and straight. And the thumb should be pretty relaxed as well. If we cover this, we get some sort of D sound. Okay. D. So that's the first sound that we would try to achieve when we're learning the practice chanter. Once we've got that successfully, we're going to lift the ring finger up. D, E, okay. Then the next finger up would be D, and then E, then F. D, E, F, and then the pointing finger would take you up to play G. And because we have another G, we call this high G at the moment. So we have D, E, F, and high G. And like I said there before, we only call this one high G because we have another G that belongs to the bagpipe scale. D, E, F, I, G. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Your ring finger is about to go back down to cover the third hole down the way. And as that goes down, at the exact same time, your thumb is going to come off. Okay, so. Now, that note there, is what we call high A. Similar to the high G, we call it high A because we have a low A. Okay, so we have learnt the first one, two, three, four, five notes. And the bagpipes only have nine notes, so that's us learnt five already. We've learnt already uh, over half of the required notes for the bagpipe scale. So just a reminder of that, D, E, F, high G, high A. Okay, so we want a pulse on each note. D, E, F, high G, high A. And it's really important that we have them evenly spaced out. I always ask my pupils to take a rest after the high eight and to take a breath and stop blowing the chanter. Ok, 
Okay, take a rest, and then we're going to sound that exact same note without moving the fingers at all again. Okay, at this point, we're just going to simply go down the way. So it's the exact same notes, but on the way down. So at this point, my thumb is going to go back down, and as it goes down, the ring finger is going to come off at the exact same time. Okay. Hi, hi G. Okay, and then you can see what's happening here. We're going to go down the way onto F. Now this pointing finger is going to go down and make sure it goes down nice and straight. That is vital that that happens. Then down to E, again nice and straight. And then the last one down to D, again nice and straight. So going down the way. So to conclude the first lesson, we would always try um, to go all the way up from D to high A and high A all the way back down to D. That would be an excellent first lesson to achieve in school time. Okay, enjoy your practicing. Well done.